Welcome to The Road. This is a weekly podcast of All Saints Lutheran Church. I'm your host, John Pedersen, and I serve as pastor. Each week, we reflect on faith, life, and navigating the road ahead. The language of journey is common when we think about life. It has its joys and challenges along the way, and we all need a little encouragement and guidance at times to keep us going. There's a word in the Bible, asphalia, which means truth, but it's the same root word we use in English for asphalt, if you can believe that is a solid surface that makes travel easier and more assured. And so every week we're going to be exploring elements of faith and life that keep us on the road. Faith isn't about living a perfect life. It's about finding our way, getting through rough spots, but seeking out those great vistas too. You can find my weekly message here, but you'll also find special conversations with guests who have insights on things like wellness, parenting, and living with unique purpose. If you appreciate this podcast, remember to subscribe where possible and share it with a friend. Here's this week's message. We're in a series talking about elements of a great adventure and how that corresponds to our faith and life. And just about every true adventure hits a snag. It has to come up against some kind of adversity or resistance, and that's what we see today. When Jesus returned to his hometown of Nazareth, he hit a big snag, and you have to appreciate what it must have been like being back in his hometown. Archaeologists and historians believe Nazareth was home to about 50 families at that time. It was a small town. Um, He was with people he grew up with, neighbors who saw him play as a kid. Last week, we heard him read from the scroll of Isaiah, as I said, in the synagogue, and his words captured the heart of what people could expect from his ministry and ended where today's reading picks up. Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. The immediate response seems positive. All spoke well of him and were amazed at his gracious words. Then we notice a subtle shift in the comments. Isn't this Joseph's son? And, you know, you can debate what the subtext was to those words. The comment could be infused with hometown pride. Hey, this Messiah is one of our own. He's Joseph's son. But it doesn't seem that that was the overtone. (laughs) It's just as easily taken with a little negative edge. People, you know, form judgments and preconceptions. Maybe the comment about Joseph's son goes back to the story of Jesus' birth. Mary was pregnant before Joseph and Mary had completed their marriage. It was a bit scandalous. Maybe that's the subtext. Or maybe it was all about jealousy. You know, this guy isn't so great. I grew up with him. His family's no better than ours. Now he's all acting so big in importance. You know, not exactly rabbi material in my opinion. Have you ever felt like the object of envy or jealousy? Have you ever felt dismissed because of it? Or do you ever find yourself on the other end? Have you ever been the jealous one? The comments about being Joseph's son seem to be a turning point in Jesus' visit. He knows his crowd very well. He grew up with them. We see how Jesus deals with it. He doesn't shrink. He clearly identifies his mission, and he perseveres in the face of intimidation. He actually comes across as a little confrontational, calling him out. He anticipates their next request. Doubtless he will say to me, do here also in your hometown the things that we have heard you did in Capernaum. Jesus essentially says, sorry, not going to happen. Instead, he states what his calling is. He references the ministry of the great prophets, Elijah and Elisha, both of whom shared God's message during a time when the people of Israel were resistant to following God. He speaks well of their ministry among Gentiles. Jesus is not so subtly laying the groundwork for something new, a new covenant. As the prophet Isaiah wrote, I'm about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth, do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Jesus refers to two foreigners in scripture that receive blessings from God's prophets and eventually come to faith in the God of Israel. Naaman was the commander of the army for the king of Aram, a neighboring kingdom to Israel. There had been tense relations with Aram in the past. 
But Naaman, the foreigner, seeks out the prophet Elisha, and Elisha grants his request and heals him of leprosy. The widow at Zarephath is from the land of Sidon and is destitute and without food in a time of drought and famine. God sends Elijah to her. There's a pretty clear theme in scripture that relates to God's care and compassion towards foreigners and those outside of his chosen people. One of the most famous places Jesus does this elsewhere is in the parable of the Good Samaritan. But really, it's part of the mission God has had since the very beginning. God's promise to Abraham when he started his special relationship with the people of Israel was, I will bless you and make you great, and through you all the peoples of the earth shall be blessed. Jesus stands before his own people and says, you want me to do all these good things for you, but it's time to do something for those beyond this town and beyond this nation. Helping foreigners and those not like us is not always a welcome idea. You know, one of, uh, one of my members in a previous church grew up on the White Earth Reservation in northern Minnesota, five brothers and sisters, and his father often helped neighbors and Native Americans on the reservation. Inevitably, Vern said there would be neighbors from the reservation who would come onto their farm and they would do a little work, and afterward, they would be invited to join the family for dinner. And there were just enough pork chops or hamburgers for each member of the family. And inviting someone like that in meant that one of the kids would end up with only part of their meal. And then when they went to town, Vern's dad would often pick up someone from the reservation on the way to town and give them a ride. And when they got there, his dad would give his kids a nickel for an ice cream cone. But he would give their guests a dollar. And as a kid he resented this. He didn't understand why these others who weren't part of the family got special treatment. He never really understood any of this until later in life. But those experiences taught him generosity and valuing every neighbor. He's now, in the course of his life, become very successful, and with his own time and resources, he is very generous now. It's easy to become jealous to feel like others may get special treatment or better treatment than us. But in his ministry, Jesus taught us to give to everyone, to love everyone, even those not like us. Needs are everywhere. The mission of Jesus is to finally extend God's blessing to all the peoples of the earth, even those that don't share our beliefs. So that's the mission of Jesus. That's what he tells his hometown crowd their response is rage. It's a dramatic turn of events. They try to hurl him off of a cliff. Tough town to come from, apparently. <laughs> so what does Jesus do? You know, he's the son of God. I suppose he could do anything given the miracle stories that we see about him elsewhere. He could hurl lightning, perhaps or do some other miracle to scare them off. I enjoy the description of what Jesus does next. He passed through the midst of them and went on his way. Great non-anxious response. I'm guessing no one has tried to hurl you off a cliff, <laughs> but maybe you felt vulnerable for some reason. Perhaps someone got angry with you. Maybe you felt hurt by an interaction or unappreciated in some way. More than ever, we need to find ways to be non-anxious in the presence of anger and other difficult environments. That's not a natural reaction for most of us as human beings. If you encounter anger or criticism or what you perceive as opposition, is it possible that instead of fighting or hurling something back in return, you could find a way to pass through the midst of it and go about your way. You know, after the fact, you will have plenty of time to reflect on the experience and whatever message you heard in that and see if there might be something to take away from it, a truth to be heard, an opportunity to learn or grow. 
You know, none of us will be perfect at this, but we can seek to focus and be more at peace in whatever snags we hit. It doesn't have to be an eye for an eye. Jesus would go on to say something about that later in his ministry. Throughout his life, Jesus found peace in his relationship with his heavenly Father, and it allowed him to continue on through times like this. Have you been able to connect with God in a way that brings you peace when you hit a snag and face some kind of hardship? God offers you love and grace today. God welcomes you and embraces you as one of his own, even when you may not feel embraced or welcomed by others. That's the beauty of the message that Jesus shared and the life he lived. Jesus wanted everyone, including those on the outside, to feel included. These were the stories of scripture he referenced with his own townspeople. It was what the prophets had done before him. That message may not have been received well by the people he grew up with, but that was how it was with the prophets before him as well. They often faced resistance and anger. We heard that referenced in the reading from the prophet Jeremiah earlier. Prophets didn't come to be liked. They came to lead and to make changes and to keep the people faithful along the way. But for Jesus, whatever controversial purpose or words he had to share were all to ensure that you and I and our neighbor, both near and far, would hear the word of good news and love from God. And so receive that word today for the well-being of your own soul, both the message and the one who bears it. Amen. Thanks be to God. That's this week's message. You don't have to navigate the road ahead alone. You can join with others at All Saints. Visit allsaintsmtka.org for more information. Have a great week. Have a great week.